This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room in Chicago, where we are at the 2012 Multidisciplinary Symposium in Thoracic Oncology, which is brought to you by ASTRO, IASLC, ASCO, and the University of Chicago. And we are joined by Dr. Lee Krug, Director of the Mesothelioma Program at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Dr. Krug is also Chair of the Advisory Board for the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm really glad we can take time out because so much more attention is needed and awareness and support for our mesothelioma patients. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's a relatively uncommon disease and it's one that's very hard to treat and there are really very limited treatment options for these patients. So any amount of exposure and awareness really makes a big difference. What is the incidence of mesothelioma? In the U.S. there are about two or three thousand cases diagnosed per year. I think you have to put that in perspective. That's about one hundredth of the number of cases of non-small cell lung cancer, for example. So it really, it's really quite a disparity there and that makes it very hard to reach out and do advocacy and convince pharmaceutical companies to do clinical trials and to get research funding and these kinds of things that creates major challenges and also in conducting studies for patients because um, the fewer patients that are available to participate and so larger trials take a considerable amount of effort to, to complete. Age range of diagnosis? Median age is 65. Obviously that's because the majority of people were exposed 20, 25 years right. uh, ago to asbestos. Uh, and that's generally a disease mainly in, in men as well for the same reason, because of the occupational mm -hmm. exposure. Mm -hmm. It's really felt to be about a ratio of male to female, about four to one. In my opinion, there are probably some genetic factors that predispose some patients to getting this disease that we haven't yet uncovered. Uh, earlier this year, though, we learned about a, a genetic mutation, BAP1, and uh, we learned simultaneously that BAP1 mutations are present in about 20% of mesothelioma tumor samples. But interestingly, also, there are uh, family cohorts of patients who have direct family members with mesothelioma or other tumor types, including uveal melanoma, uh, breast cancer, meningiomas, and there can be germline BAP1 mutations in these family cohorts. So BAP1 does seem to be an important gene in this disease, and I think that over time we'll probably learn about others as well. The medical approach to treating mesothelioma today, typically, describe that, please. I think one important thing is that patients who uh, are diagnosed with this disease really need to try to seek out somebody who has some experience in treating it, which is not always easy. Uh, there's not a lot of physicians around the country who specialize in treating this disease, but, and so a lot of oncologists may have only seen one case in the last year or two. It's hard to come up with a good treatment plan for those patients. So I would imagine a second opinion at a cancer center that has a mesothelioma department is a very important stop for if, any If patient. it's at all possible, it is. And if not, reaching out to an organization like the Meso Foundation would be another uh, opportunity. So what are the chemotherapy drugs that you use to treat mesothelioma? So most patients with mesothelioma do present with more advanced disease. Um, for patients with earlier stage disease, sometimes surgery is a consideration for them to try to remove the bulk of the tumor. Um, for patients with more advanced disease, and their, <clears throat> their primary treatment is chemotherapy. There's really only one approved uh, chemotherapy regimen for mesothelioma, and that's pemetrexid and cisplatin. Um, and so, as you can imagine, that leaves a limited number of options for these patients once they've had treatment with that combination, there really are few, if any, effective treatments available following that. Does mesothelioma metastasize like other cancers? 
the majority of patients with mesothelioma will present with disease just confined to the chest at the time of diagnosis. But it can spread, and it's usually something that spreads later on in the patient's disease course. To where it can is spread to the other lung, mm -hmm. it can cross the diaphragm and spread into the peritoneum. And in uh, some more advanced aggressive cases, you can even get spread to the bone or liver. Mortality? Nearly all patients who are ever diagnosed with mesothelioma ultimately succumb to their disease. The average survival is probably around a year. Wow, that's paralyzing. Yeah, well. Literally, because I yeah. can imagine that upon diagnosis, the psychosocial ramifications for these patients and families has to be just profound. It's very hard. And, um, and I think it's also challenging, especially with this disease, because patients with mesothelioma can really have a wide spectrum of, of, of how the disease behaves. There are definitely some cases that are much more aggressive, especially uh, the sarcomatoid variant or the biphasic mixed types. And then there are other patients that have an epithelioid variant of mesothelioma, and they have a much broader spectrum of how they can behave. There are some patients that have a more aggressive type of that, and then there are others who, in some cases, survive for, for many years. You don't really have a sense when you meet somebody of how their disease is going to behave, how it will respond to the chemotherapy. So uh, that, these all create challenges. And then with the added issues uh, surrounding the legal aspects and, and the uh, challenges in finding somebody who actually can, can treat them effectively with modern therapies and so forth, it, it, it's very difficult. I really want to thank you for shedding some light on, on mesothelioma and for uh, the research and the hope that as we see um, biologic agents and uh, targeted therapies and the growth of personalized medicine that it will positively impact patients dealing with mesothelioma. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee Krug, Director of the Mesothelioma Program at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City and Chair of the Advisory Board for the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.